Hello, welcome to this part of the tutorial. So I'll walk you through how to do a basic water injection model for the sake of your project. Okay, so um, first of all, I don't know how familiar you are with Eclipse, but I'll just um, I'll do some introduction, and then we will go right into the business of the day. So this is the simulation launcher for Eclipse. So it comprises of um, sections. The first one is where you have the simulators. Uh, installed with Eclipse. I have Eclipse, the first one Eclipse. Eclipse written this way is actually Eclipse 100 used for black oil simulation. Black oil simulation is just um, where you do not consider the composition of your fluid. So um, we say you're doing black oil simulation. Now when you're considering the composition we call it composition analysis. So for composition analysis you use E300 Eclipse 300. Now and this is for frontal simulation where you consider streamlines and all those. Okay, then we also have um, pre and post tools, um, post tools like flow V's where you used to um, used to visualize the flow. So you can view your gridding pattern there. You can view the position of your wells, and then you can also view um, saturation changes, um, uh, permeability changes, and all that. No, just. Uh, we'll actually use this in this tutorial, so let me leave this explanation until when we see it in action. Okay, and office office is um you use it to write data file and to visualize the results either in a tabular form or a graphical form. I'll also use this in this tutorial um, because of license issues. I'll not be using office to write my data file. I'll be writing the data file in um, Notepad. Or any text editor of your choice. You can use any text editor of your choice to write your data file and then run it with Eclipse. It's still the same thing. The only difference is that you have to know the keywords and um, and how to use them. That's just the only difference. But for this tutorial, um, it it's it to be pretty simple to do that. So let's go right into business. Okay, I forgot to mention there are other sections. If you have petrol installed, it should show up here then some um, utilities license tools and this is the manual so the default installation comes to the manual so you can go through that you can read and see and um, to understand more about Eclipse okay having said that let's go right into the business of the day so I'm gonna write the data file like I said I'll need any text editor but for now I want to use that but I think that's the simplest I'm gonna split my screen okay so I have data already I think uh, I have developed this model already but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just go um, walk you through how to write a model so that you understand the different sections, what everything you're seeing here, what they actually mean. I'm doing this assuming that you um, you do not understand a basic data file or how to write one. So that's that. Okay, so let's go right into the business. Now, um, Eclipse deals with keywords. It's just like um, when you're writing a program, if you're a programmer, you'll understand this. If you're writing a program you should understand you should know the keywords used by that particular language you're adopting is the same thing with Eclipse it has a whole lot of keywords as in very many of them so you need to know what each keyword stands for and where to use the keyword because the knowledge of this is very important okay so at this point I'll love to tell you that there are about nine sections um, in Eclipse and the keywords for those nine sections. The nine sections have to be written in the order, in their correct order, else you'll have a whole lot of problems. So the sections for an Eclipse data file are the run spec section, the grid section, the edit section, the uh, which one again, the props, okay, the regions, After the regions, you have um, the solution, then you have um, summary, and then schedule, and um, is it optimized? Yeah. Now, some of the sections are mandatory, while others are optional. Sections like edit, regions, and um, optimize, these are optional sections. Optimize is actually um, a keyword, a section for only Eclipse 300. But what I'm going to do today is um, black oil modeling, so I do not need this one clearly. This is for Eclipse 300, so I'm going to take that one out. The edit 
I will not be using this in this tutorial. Why? Because um, the edit uh, contains instruction for modifying the pore volume, block center depth, transmissibilities, diffusivities, and then neighbor connections computed by the program. I do not have a need to modify whatever I'll be putting in the grid section uh, because of the data I'm using. So I will not need this. If you need more information on edit, please um, go to the manual and read, or you go online. I don't know if you, that tutorials online or books online, but definitely you'll find them in the <coughs> the manual. Okay, the regions too. I'll not be using that because um, the region is basically used to divide your model into regions, compartments. So um, for for the model I want to develop today, it's just I just one region suffices. For whatever I'm gonna do so I'm gonna take the regions out like I said these keywords must be written in this order right? must be written in this order okay let me also bring to your notice that the minimum character length for each of this section should be eight characters for solution solution is up to eight characters so you can write any other thing okay summary is about seven for keywords like props that are less than that You'll have to pad it with spaces to make it up to it, right? That is, if you intend to write any other character there, ideally there should be no other character after the keyword. If there are characters, other characters after a keyword, Eclipse will throw errors. So um, the ideal thing is, once you write the keyword, you go to the next line, right? But sometimes for readability, you might want to um, inc include other characters or maybe write comments. If you want to include other characters, then make sure that you leave eight characters. If they're not up to eight, pad it with spaces. What I mean is, for props, you have one, two, three, four, five. Now it's not up to eight, it's three characters short. So I'll just use spaces one, two, three. So that's up to eight. I can add another one before I write something like this. What I actually want to do is just to separate the sections so that I will know once I come to this, I'm entering a different section entirely. So that's what I do. It's just for readability. It's nothing. It doesn't add anything wasted. Uh, it doesn't add anything to the data file, right? So that's what I do. That's just my own preference. So you might want to leave your own like that. If you do that, there's no problem. Please feel free to adopt any style of your choice. Once you're done with um, the sections, the next thing which you'll have to do is to start defining the keywords for the different sections. Okay, so we're almost there. Now let's start from the very first. The the first keyword, um, the first section is the run spec. That is where you um you define the title of your model and then um general model um specifications like the number of grid blocks that should be included in the model. Okay, let me at this point also explain that Eclipse uses gridding, um, uses grids to represent the model. What that means is if you have a reservoir, no matter how large or um, large or small the reservoir is, things um, basically what you'll be modeling here is but the reservoir and the uh, wells and surface equipment so you can do a whole full field simulation using Eclipse. So for um, the reservoir, which is the base where everything starts from, you'll have to divide to your reservoir into grids. So if you're using, um, if you have a reservoir that is, um, let's say 500 feet, uh, 500 feet is too small, right? <laughs> uh, let's just use that for example, 500 feet by 500 feet by 100 feet. Uh, what you have to do is you split that um, reservoir into smaller grid blocks. And then um, you can decide the number of grid blocks to, the, um, to split the reservoir into is uh, actually your, your choice your your liberty your freedom to split your reservoir into any number of grid blocks you want so let's say we decide to split things you have about 500 decide to split it into five grid blocks or yeah five grid blocks so that means each grid block should be about um 100 right 100 feet by um 100 feet in the x axis 100 feet in the y and then um the z the z axis which is the layers and decide to split the layers into um, five grid blocks too. That will be about 10, 10 feet, 10 feet each. So um, now you have to tell us the number of grid blocks 
here in this section okay you'll also have to tell us the faces uh, that's the flutes present in your model those are the things um okay the, uh, apart from the flutes the number of walls you'll be expecting and all that all that information like that those are the informations required in the respect section in the grid section the grid section is where you now tell us the dimensions of the the grid blocks which you've already defined let's say you've told us we need um you've told eclipse that you need five grid blocks in the x axis five in the y and also five in the z axis now you need to tell eclipse what are the dimensions of those grid blocks so that's what you do in the grid section you also define block properties like um, permeability um porosity uh okay permeability porosity transmissibility and all this in the grid section now in the prop section you define um fluid properties like um saturation functions um pvt functions uh, and um yeah density uh, compressibility and all those these are the information required in the prop section the solution section is where you supply equilibration data like um you have to tell us the fluid contact the oil and water contact the uh, the reference depth which you've chosen the pressure that reference depth which essentially will be your reservoir pressure uh, you also have to define uh, the gas oil contact and um, the capillary pressure at those contact anyway as we proceed we'll get to know how to do this so instead of just um, talking 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 let's just go into action okay now i uh, told you in the respect section you have to define the title of your model so the once uh <clears throat> let me at this point also explain like i said before once you've written the keyword you should naturally go to the next line to supply the data <clears throat> the data is not supplied on the same line with the keyword that is um, the standard for eclipse the data should be supplied on the next line and then you terminate the data with a forward slash right uh in classical programming um languages like c c sharp <clears throat> c sharp c sharp uses curly braces um to define sections right so if you're writing maybe like an if block you so you start the if block with a curly brace and then you end the if block with a, a closing curly brace uh languages like um, python uses um columns and then uses tab on them but in eclipse <clears throat> what you do is you use um the keyword starts the <coughs> starts the section or the the start of input for that particular uh, this thing and then the forward slash terminates the data so you use forward slash to terminate so now uh, once you uh, write the title uh the title keyword you can write the title the title can be anything you're free to write anything as a title so i'm gonna write um water injection simulation the, the the title keyword you must not it doesn't necessarily require a forward slash to terminate it you can just leave it like that okay but all other ones you must terminate with a forward slash okay the next thing is to define the dimensions you use the dimens keyword to define the dimensions um i love um pushing my keywords or maybe uh, yeah using tab to push the key on the, the data inside so instead of just writing start supplying my data here or rather just push them inside with just um a, a single tab right that's my own style like i said uh there is no penalty you start writing the data here okay the diamonds keyword here is used to supply the number of grid blocks which you've decided to split your model into so for this model i'm going to use 24 grid blocks in the x axis you use splits to separate the data so 24 in the x axis 25 in the y axis and uh, 15 in the z axis now you can use space to separate the data or use tab but at least there should be um separation between first one and the second one so whatever character i want to use to separate that either one a single space or multiple spaces or a tab character or multiple tab characters whatever but at least there should be a distinction okay so now this is 24 grid blocks in the x axis 
25 grid blocks in the y axis and 15 grid blocks in the z axis. The z axis is actually the layer, so I'll be seeing layer. When I refer to layer, you should be thinking of uh, the 15 grid blocks in the y axis. Well, um, this one's actually the okay. I'll just say x and y, and then the z will be layers. Okay, so having defined uh, the next thing which you'll have to tell the eclipse is um, the faces you're expecting. If you have oil, you use the oil keyword to specify that. If you have gas, you use the gas keyword to specify. If you have water, you use <coughs> water keyword. Okay, the keyword for water is water. All right, and then I have dissolved gas so to include dissolved gas you use this gas these the first three characters this is dissolved and then gas right you also have vaporized oil then you use the vap oil cured uh, but my model doesn't have this now let me at this point tell you that whatever data you're supplying here should be a uh, representative of what you're trying to model so meaning you should get the data either from um, log data, from lab data, or well test, or whatever, whatever. But it should be something that is from the field, information from the field, reliable, right? Okay, now the next thing you have to tell Eclipse is the unit you want to use for whatever data you're supplying. If you look at this keyword, you discover there are no points I'm writing in a unit, like here I'm defining my permeability, but I did not write some like Melidasi or whatever. So just supply <coughs> the numeric value and then whatever you tell Eclipse here is what Eclipse will now use to know um, the unit in which the numeric value was inputted, right? So we have about four um, types of units defined in Eclipse. We have um, the field unit, we have metric units, that's your SI unit. We have um, uh, the field units, actually the English units. So we have field, metric, we have lab lab unit are those micro units used in the lab so we have those ones are in the range of the centi uh, cubic centiliter uh, and all those ones like that just the small micro units and then i think the last one is one pvt something like that units one well, it's really used anyway i things we're working in the field uh units is actually field units our uh, data is actually supplied in field units so i'm gonna use field units okay now the next thing which i'll have also want to supply is the uh the number of wells the number of wells i'll be expecting in this model so you use the well dimensions keyword to um do that the well dimensions keyword um requires about um I think about five but mandatory three you have to supply three of those data mandatorily the first one is the maximum number of wells your model can hold at any point in time so you can increase that number to whatever value you want uh, it, it's not compulsory that you must have that number of wells in that model but it's just to accommodate in case <coughs> you want to add more wells so you won't have to come here and it is all the time so for me in this model I'm gonna increase it to 30 but in reality I only have five wells in this model like I said you can increase it to whatever value you want or you can use the exact number of wells you'll be representing you'll be inputting okay so the next thing is um the number of perforations or technically the number of layers you want to perforate as the maximum number of layers each well can perforate or the maximum number of layers you can perforate for any well so i'm gonna set that at five i i don't want to perforate more than five layers right well although i have 15 layers I don't want to prefer more than five layers for any of my model. But anyway, it's not me that do that. <laughs> I'm not the one that technically that doesn't want to prefer it. But it's just the data I have from the field. Um, the the layers preferred are not more than five. Yeah, right. So I'm gonna set that at five. Now the last one is actually the number of wells that can be in any group. Now it's possible to group your wells together yeah it's possible to do that in eclipse so now once you group wells you can uh, you can have as many groups as you want so the third value should tell us should tell eclipse the maximum number of wells that should be in any group at any point in time uh you can also put any value there but not whatever you have there should not be greater than 
the first value here. So I can also set that to five. Okay, so that's not that. So these, what I'm having here and what I'm having here, it's almost the same, right? Uh, but it does, uh, like I explained, I set this to 30 of my own free will. But here I want to set it to 5. Uh, you can also set it to 100. You can set it to 20, to 10, whatever. But make sure that the number of worlds you have, you'll define finally, does not exceed this. If it does, Eclipse will throw an error and you'll have to come and edit it, right? Okay, now the other thing which I'll also want to do is um, I like using this keyword, the unif out keyword. This is to unify the summary files that will be written by Eclipse. Summary files are just um, um, files that contain the results of the calculations performed by Eclipse. Uh, mainly uh, production uh, results, like um, Eclipse will be calculating your oil production, water production and all that. So once it does a calculation, you can optionally ask it to write <coughs> the data that results into uh, <coughs> summary files so that you can view them either graphically or in the tabular method so i like unifying all those values all those um, summary file into one single file instead of having them different at different time steps anyway i'll explain more on this when we get to the summary section right okay so the unif out is just unified output that's what it means unified output that means join all the summary files together into one just give me a single file instead of multiple summary files oh and um, the next thing is um, to specify the start date of um, your simulation you can set this to any date back dates or forward date or whatever or whatever date you supply here the eclipse will start calculating time steps from the dates whatever date you're supplying here right so i'm gonna set this today's date is 18 june so this should be 18 June 23. Okay. 2023. That's all. Notice all these other values. I'm terminating them with the forward slash. Now, um, because this is the start keywords require one line of data, the world end keyword requires one line of data. But these other ones, they don't require any other data, they're just self sufficient keywords. So there's no need to terminate them. This one requires one line of data, so I terminate. Right. The um, as we proceed, you come across keywords that require more than one line of data, and in such situation, you'll have to terminate each line with a single slash before you terminate the keyword itself. For instance, if this keyword actually required more than one line of data, let's say for instance, it also needs something like this. All right. So. After terminating each line with a forward slash, you'll also have to terminate the keyword itself, that is the start keyword, with a forward slash. So this forward slash issue is actually very serious. That's the only way Eclipse will know you're done with that particular keyword and you're moving to the next keyword. Very important. Okay, so now let's get to the grid section. The grid section, like I explained before, is um, where you supply the dimensions of um, the grid the grid blocks which you've already specified using the diamonds keyword and then your rock properties rock properties like porosity permeability now since you're doing a study you might want to alter these values right you might all want to alter these values to check the effect of um, those properties on the performance or on your model so this is a section where you actually do that now to specify the porosity you use the poro keyword now how do you supply the data like a couple of methods a uh, couple of um, ways of doing that uh, the first one which is the normal thing which you should do is to supply porosity value for each of the grid blocks now look at this this is a 3d model so if i say um i have 24 cells in the x axis 25 cells in the y axis and 15 cells in the grid axis what is the total number of grid blocks I have in this model? How do you calculate that? It's very simple. Just multiply all this together. 24 times 25 times 15. That's the total number of grid blocks. And you need porosity for all the grid blocks. All of them. So, in effect, what you actually need is 9,000 values of porosity. <laughs> so you can decide to start writing those 9,000 values initially. Like, 
zero point two space zero point two space zero point two five depending on the value of porosity for that particular grid block. That is like I said, you need to get this data from the field or from the lab, right? So but instead of if the porosity is uniform, right? If you have um let's say an average porosity for the entire field, instead of writing that value nine thousand times, you can use the shortcut to write it. Now the number of times times the value, right? So it's as simple as that. Now I am assigning zero point two, which is the value of my porosity, to the nine thousand grid blocks which I need in this model. So that's the shortcut how to write it. The number of times times the particular value you need. Okay. So that is that with this I have supplied 9,000 values of porosity and I've set each of those values to 0 0.2. That's my porosity. You can do that for permeability too. To have permeability you use pen. But we have, um, this is a 3D model, so we have permeability in three um, axes. We have in the X axis, Y and Z axis. So pen X, um, my permeability is, uh, permeability is 100 milliliters. That my pen Y is also 100 liters. That's 1000. Then my pen Z is actually 10 liters. Now, um, you might get confused that what I'm writing here is not the same thing I'm writing here. Um, I will explain what I'm actually doing here because the all of these, the all of these and these are the same thing. Now I'm here I defined just the permeability for the x-axis, which is what I did here. Good. But for the y, instead of defining the permeability for the y, I copied the value. So I used the copy keyword to copy the permeability value from x into y. And I also did the same here, copy from x into z. Uh, this method is actually very useful, especially if you define the permeability for each of the cell individually instead of lumping them together. So if you wrote 9,000 values of um, permeability for the um, X value for the perm X, uh, you might find it very cumbersome to write the same 9,000 values, especially when their values is the same, when the perm X and the perm Y is the same. Why would you want to repeat 9,000 values again? So in such a situation, <coughs> it is um, very useful to just copy the value. Just use a copy keyword to copy the value from one permeability to another. Now the uh, <coughs> the quotation, the quotes here, yeah, they're actually optional. <coughs> Excuse me. The quotes, they're optional, so you can do without the quotes. I can remove this and it will still go, right? Also, the other values you see here, um, they are optional too. Uh, they're optional, especially when you're copying the entire permeability value. That's what I'm doing here. The first two value means I'm copying everything from the first grid block in the X axis to the last grid block in the Y axis. Notice I have to four grid blocks in the X axis. So, copying everything from the first to the last grid block in the X axis. Now, the second you see the values they come in pairs the second one is for the y axis from the first grid block there to the last grid, bro um, grid block in the y axis and now the the last set of value is um, i'm copying the permeability from the first grid block in the z axis to the last grid block in the z axis actually omitted that here too why because what I'm doing here and just terminating it here is the same thing. Once you terminate without supplying the um, the grid blocks you actually want to copy, Eclipse will assume that you want to copy everything. Eclipse will just copy everything for you. So that's that. That's why I didn't do that here. Okay. So I have introduced you to the copy keyword in case you want to use it in the future or in case you come into a data file that uses it, you should understand what it actually does. You can read more on uh, from the manual from the Eclipse manual. Now, after I had copied the X to the Z, notice um, I wrote ten 
milliliter C and these other ones are 100 but I copied 100 from the X to the Z how do I modify it to make it 10 I use the multiply keyword so I multiplied whatever value I copied here by a factor of 0 0.1 the 0 0.1 times 100 should give me 10 right so that's another way so if you used copy and you notice that um, some values or all the values actually uh, they are not the same maybe they are just a factor less you can just use the multiply keyword to modify the value you copied for that particular one so that's what I did I modified the value I copied into the pen Z I modify it by multiplying it by 0 0.1 so these are actually very useful tools okay so <clears throat> the next thing which you will want to supply is um, the depths of the, the dimensions of each grid block the dimensions in the x y and z direction respectively so the way to do that is to use the dx the dy and the dz uh, keywords now what is the x the x is the dimension right dimension in the x direction or we'll say the thickness or the width yeah it should be the width it should be the the breadth uh, okay the length is it <laughs> length breadth and height yeah so this is the length this is the breadth and this is the height okay so you can do this for the dx I have um, 300 but the 300 is for the entire 9000 so each of um, the 9000 grid blocks has um, 300 feet the x axis I can also do that That's the 3000, sorry. And for the DZ, I have 9000 times how um, um, What's the, this thing? It's 50, 50 feet in the Z. I'm using a different method in this. I'll also explain that to you. Okay. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm using the equals keyword to define these values. Now, the equals keyword comes in very handy. Um, let me use the tips value to explain the equals keyword. Uh, so let's just write some like equals and then I terminate it with this. This one actually require uh, accepts more than one line. This is what I was trying to explain. That when you have more than one line of input for any particular keyword, you have to terminate each line with a forward slash before you terminate the keyword itself with a forward slash. So the same thing is applicable for the multiply and for the copy okay so now for the equals i will specify tops value uh, by the way the question will be what is tops tops is the distance from the top the surface that's the surface uh, to the first layer of your model i have 15 layers so the very first layer was the distance from the surface up to that layer so you specify that using the tops and for my model it's my model is 9000 feet deep so the distance from the surface to the first layer is 9000 feet now uh, I need to tell my model I need to tell Eclipse that these tops is actually for the first layer not for you can also specify for other layers for the second layer the third layer up to the last layer but um, doing something like that is cumbersome especially when you're having you have just a flat surface if you have um, slanted if your reservoir is slanted then this is very useful you'll have to supply the data for each of the grid blocks to mimic the slanting or whatever angle or whatever <coughs> in any way it is um, um, tilted you can also use the cuts keyword anyway okay <coughs> so now I'll have to tell Eclipse um, that I'm specifying for the first layer. So the way to do that is, I'll tell Eclipse that for the X axis, so it's fine from the first to the 24th um, grid block in the X axis. It, the, this thing, this value is the common pairs. So from the first to the 24th for the X, for the first to the 25th for the Y, and then from the first to the first, right? This time it's first to first because I'm supplying for just the top layer. So if I'm supplying for the second layer, I'll say two to two, right? Like that. 
so let me change that to one to one now <clears throat> i'll leave this at this i'll not supply for the other layers i'll not supply for the second layer i'll not supply for the third layer and the question will be if you don't supply for those ones how will the software know that is where the equals keyword comes in very handy all omitted values will be automatically computed or calculated by the software if you include them either in a box keyword or in an equals keyword um, since i've supplied for the first layer to get to know the depth of the second layer the model will now look at the depth of the first one then we'll look at the thickness of the, the layer now to calculate the second one is just to add this to this so <clears throat> 9000 <000 coughs> times one plus 50 feet will now give you 9050 feet that is the distance from the top to the second layer so it will continue like that until it gets to the last layer just that so that's where the equals keyword comes in very handy okay um now well, the same thing that is i did i didn't have to multiply this by 9000 that's by 9000 the 9000 here is actually the distance from the top to that i didn't have to do 9000 times that it's not important so just supply the value then <clears throat> specify these ones okay so that's that i think i'm done with this part now let's go to the props keyword i'm tired of typing and i think i've um, spent a whole lot of time already so i will do from now on i'll just do more of copy and paste i'll explain and then copy and paste and then we'll run the model we're running out of time okay so let's continue now the i told you i'm not using edit so i have to remove or i've removed it from here now we'll look at the props keyword the props is where you supply your fluid properties right your your fluid rock uh, fluid properties so the first one is you have to supply saturation values saturation values for all the fluids you have basically we have three fluids oil water and gas the dissolved gas is actually gas but it's inside the oil so it's still gas so you supply saturation function for the three fluids and pvt function for the three fluids too how do you do that you use the various keywords available we have keywords like sof2 uh-huh we have sof3 fof2 <coughs> is used to supply saturation function oil saturation function or saturation function for two phase uh, two phase can be oil and gas or oil and water but two phase saturation function use sof2 use sof3 for three phase saturation function or alternatively you can decide to specify for each of um, the the function so we have keywords like so sw of which is oil water saturation function s is saturation w is water o is oil and f is function so oil water saturation function so you can use that you can also use s g o f that is gas oil saturation function right to supply saturation function for gas and oil then you can use a <coughs> okay there are other saturation functions you can use swfn to supply just saturation function for water so this will be water saturation function so just for water and then you can also do for gas sg sgfn for gas saturation function but for this tutorial i'm using swof which is water oil water saturation function and these comprises of four columns so you have the saturation at different values from the initial water saturation since this is water in relation to oil so you start with water saturation from the initial water saturation which is swi so if you ask what is your initial water saturation is the first value you find in a w swof function or swfn function the first value okay so you increment it up to the last um water saturation the highest water saturation you're expecting most times you will have one here right 
uh, sometimes it, it ends where it ends <coughs> but it should be representative of whatever you, this data should be from the lab not assumption so now for each saturation you should compute the relative permeability of water the oil water relative permeability and then the capillary pressure so that's what you do for each saturation function for each saturation value computes the others then you present them as in a tabular form that is what comprises what makes your s w or f function so i'll just copy and paste i'm done with that one okay so the next one is um i have s g o f like i said this is gas oil saturation function since this is gas um, function in respect with respect to oil you'll start with gas saturation and then we have um gas relative permeability and then oil and gas relative permeability since we're doing oil gas and then we have capillary pressure for oil and gas now the same thing you did there for each saturation you compute the other values these should also be from the lab so i'm gonna copy and paste gonna copy and paste okay now uh, we are done with saturation since we've defined for oil in relation to for gas in relation to oil and for water in relation to oil our three phase we've taken care of the three phase there are no phases left so we're done with saturation function the next one is pvt function for the three now well, they are very um there are a couple of pvt functions you can use pvtw which is pvt function for water pvt for water w water the other one pvt you can also use pv pvdg that's pvt for dry gas dry gas pvt function for dry gas that's gas with no oil in it that's because i do not have um there is no vaporized oil in my gas right so it's just dry gas if you have paper, um, vaporized oil, then you, you, you don't, you're not supposed to use PVDG. You also have PV, um, DM, PVTO, which is the PVT of life oil. Hmm? PVTO, PVT of life oil. Life oil is actually oil that has dissolved gas. Now, I'm going to use this because I have dissolved gas in my model. If there's no dissolved gas then there's no need to use this so <clears throat> pvto is for life oil what about dead oil <laughs> that's oil with no gas you use pvdo pvt of dead oil as oil with no dissolved gas in it okay so um let's just go and look at the structure of the data for pvto you need your solution gas alteration right your solution gas all right yeah solution you are so you need your solution GORRS, you need your bubble point pressure, you need your oil formation volume factor and oil viscosity. So for each solution um, GOR, you have to compute, get the bubble point pressure and um, <coughs> your oil formation volume factor and the viscosity. So once you get that for all the values of your um, RS, then um, your, your table will be ready. These also should be from the lab. Okay, so done with the uh, copy and paste. Let's go to the next one now. The same thing happens for the dry gas. So we have um, the gas pressure, the pressure of the gas, right? We have the gas formation volume factor and the viscosity of the gas. So for each value of the pressure, you get your formation volume factor and um, viscosity for gas. Okay, so uh, once you do that, you also have to supply for water. Since um, what you did here is just oil and the gas inside the oil dissolved gas, then you've done the dry gas. The next phase left is the water phase. So that's why you have to use PVTW to supply that of water. What you need here is just a reference depth at which the water is found, then the oil water formation volume factor, the compressibility of water viscosity of water and then so once you get that a single value is okay for this one you don't need multiple values after water the other doesn't have too much of a problem 
the formation value factor is constant it doesn't change it's one the compressibility water is constant to is one and all that okay zero point that okay now the next thing is to get the rock um compressibility the compressibility of our rock and use the rock keyword to define that now um notice you're finding you've seen you're seeing things like two um, iPhones and then you're finding values like this these are not actually required these are not keywords please they are actually comments if you're a programmer you discover writing comments actually helps a lot in explaining your code especially to someone who has not seen it or maybe for yourself in case you want to come and work on the code in the future so you can use comments to explain sections of your code so that's what I'm doing here anything preceded by two iPhones is a comment and you'll be it will not be read by Eclipse so don't allow this to confuse you yeah I can remove them if you're not comfortable so this is the actual data right this one too these are comments and these are comments okay and this one so it's just like this thing I, I wrote here it's not important please remove them you can remove them if you want to its personal preference so. okay so that's that's that uh, this one let me just move it to make the data file um, smooth okay so the rock keyword the only thing you need is the pressure and the compressibility that's for the rock I'll remove the comments and I copy it so the comments should go okay that's the value and then you also need the density of your flute the density of the different faces so the first one is the density of oil the second is the density of water the last one is the density of gas <coughs> so you can appreciate while I was using comments just to tell you what the values are because um, if I write it this way sometimes it's difficult to know which is which so the comments actually help a lot when you come back to it okay <clears throat> so with these I am okay there are other um, data there are other keywords you can use but this one suffices for the model we are trying to develop same thing these are not all the keywords you can use in the grid section there are other keywords like trans trans x trans y trans z even we have something like PEM XX, we have PEM YY and PEM ZZ and all those ones. Uh, but they are not important for this particular model which I'm trying to um, do. The data I've supplied here or the keywords I've used here, they're actually um, they are okay for the model. So uh, you can look at the manual to get more information about what keywords to use at any point in time, depending on what we are actually trying to model. Okay. So once you're done with that, next thing is the solution section. The solution is just um, basically equilibration data to define your contacts, your fluid contacts, oil, water, and uh, gas oil contact, and the pressure at a part of a specified datum point, which will represent, in essence, your reservoir pressure. Okay, <clears throat> so you use the equal keyword to define that so you define a datum point and then a pressure at that datum point then the water oil contact a water oil contact is at 9950 feet and the gas oil contact is at 8800 feet so this is the capillary pressure at the contact and at the gas contact okay this one um, the next value here is just telling you that we have um, a table, the bubble point pressure versus depth table. We have one table like that. If you do not have this, this should be set to zero. But since we have data for that, I decided to include it. This is just showing the pressure at this depth. So at the depth of 30,000, say the bubble point pressure is that. And uh, just this data, you get it once you. I'm oh, sorry. I should come here. If you if you have a data from the field, you this data naturally comes with those data, so you don't really have problem. All you have to do is to identify which data is important for a particular section, and then use the data accordingly. So identification of the 
data is important is another thing. That's what makes you um, a reservoir engineer. <laughs> okay, so we're done with the solution section um, with this. Now come to the summary section. The summary section, like I said, is um, where you instruct Eclipse to output certain production data so that you can use them later on either to visualize graphically or in a tabular form depending on which you like most okay so if you don't specify anything in the summary section then eclipse will not output the data it will actually calculate but will not write it out in a summary file for you to use so it's very important since you're doing a study you'll need those data to plot graphs or um, to present in tables in your results section so it's very important you specify this now there are keywords which you use to tell eclipse which data to output at any point in time those keywords are very simple to know now every keyword that starts with f represents field data that's the data for the entire field anyone that starts with w represents data for a, you know, for a well right we also have keywords that start with p that represents data for a block i'll explain so if you have something like f-o-p-r then you're asking eclipse to output field f for field o for oil p for production and r for it uh, once p comes as the third character it's um, probably production can also be potential right um, it's potential if you're doing something like FOPP. Now uh, this one is field oil potential production. That's the potential of the well. Now most times you don't actually produce your well at um, the optimal <coughs> the optimal production rate. Sometimes you need to chuck it back because of constraints in the surface and all that. Right? So you can actually ask Eclipse to output the potential production and also to output the rate at which it is producing at any point in time. So FOPR is field oil production rate. So you can also ask Eclipse to output the field oil production total. Now field oil production total T is total P production. It's actually the cumulative oil produced over time, right? So you can also do for water FW. W is water. You I think you you might have noticed that by now that anywhere you have water you have w anywhere you have water you have w anywhere you have gas you have g right anywhere you have oil you have coal. so that's just the pattern it's simple to get these things so field water production rates you have field water production total you have um, some like um field gas production rates you have field gas production total you have um what again what do you need okay you'll be injecting water so you can get field water injection rates you also get field water injection total and you can very important get the pressure your field pressure is very important so as to know if the pressure is actually declining if injecting water will actually help to increase the pressure or to stabilize the pressure at a particular um, <clears throat> value so that it doesn't it will give you it will allow you to produce at the rate which you want to produce. So FPR is field average pressure. Now you might also want to get these values for the different wells. This one is for the entire field, right? You might want to get it for the different wells you'll be modeling. So you use W. So we say W O P R. That's well oil production rate. But if you're doing for well, you'll be having more than one well. So you will need to specify those wells you need to get the data from if you don't want to specify the wells you want to get for all the wells then you just close the keyword with a forward slash now when eclipse comes and does not find any well definition within this keyword you will now know that you're asking it to output everything so you can also do the same thing for water fuel water production i mean well water production rates you also need well um well cast production rates rates and the total and all that adds and um, you're just at liberty to define as many of them as you want please i'll, I'll stop here for now okay let me just output one which is very important well water cut all water cut is important and um, i think this one too should be very important well bottom pressure very important so i'll stop here
if you're editing the model if you're doing yours you can define as many of these as you want for want of time please let me stop here all right then you can do the others yourself okay now that leads us to the schedule section ah there's something i forgot to mention ah uh, these swof these saturation tables the maximum value which eclipse permits at any point in time is 20 values but if you count what i have here it's more than 20 values let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 you know 1 22 still counting so uh if i run this model the way it is eclipse will throw an error maybe i should just run it and allow you to see the error before i edit what do you think okay let's just run it and see the error before continue let's go to the next section let's look at schedule okay okay let me also uh let me include this keyword this keyword this keyword excel excel keyword is just to tell eclipse to um generate an excel file that contains everything with access to output so it's just like dumping this um, summary result in an excel readable file for you so that you can open with excel and do whatever you want to do with <clears throat> so you can plot the result in excel instead of relying on the plot that will be generated by office right let's please let's go to the next section now in the next section you do a whole lot of things and you define your wells you define the completions for the wells and then you control your wells the way you want to so to define your wells you use the well spec keyword the well specs keyword now um, the well specs keyword is just where you tell you define your wells so i'm defining one two three about five wells right the labels or the name of the well is actually you have liberty to choose any name for your well so there are no added fast rules just the way you want to name your well uh, but if you're working in a field you discover each field has its own naming convention you might want to if you're doing this for a company you might want to use the naming convention here but if you're not well, you can use any other thing so for me i'm using ing for injection wells and prod for production wells Please, the um, quotes is optional. The quotes are seen here, they are they're optional. Okay, so I'm using PROD for production wells and ING. So the first column represents the name or label of the well. The second column represents the group of the well. I told you it's possible to group your wells, right? So this is where you define the groups. The second column should represent the group. So I'm using I for injectors and using P for producers. You can use any any alphabet. Most times, in most data files, you'll be finding you'll discover that you use G for all their groups. I don't know, whatever it is, just define your own. Now, the next value should be the uh, the x value, the x position. As in, since you're having twenty four grid blocks in the x um, direction, you have to define which of the grid blocks. The index of the grid block in the x direction where you want to place your well and also the index of the grid block in the y direction so you're having x and y the first 12 here represents the 12th grid block in the x axis and then the 12th grid block in the y axis that's where i want to place my well now the next value you have there is the datum depth for the well um, it's just like a uh, a node where all computations will be done from you know most of the, the calculation will be done using the data analysis where you have to calculate the inflow and the outflow so you need a datum depth a, a reference position where you can do your computations where you can calculate the inflow into the node and the outflow from the node right so you can our engineers they understand these things i pray you'll be one <laughs> okay and then the last one is the fluid type, right? The fluid type. So since this is an injector and I'm injecting water, so the fluid type is water. Since this is a producer, this will be a producer, so I define the fluid as oil. So that's all for the well specs keyword. So I'll just copy and paste. We'll continue. Like I said, these are comments optional. Nice. Okay. Now the next um, keyword you have there is a comdat keyword. The comdat keyword is used to define 
completion data so com for completion and then that for data uh, like I said Eclipse constraints the keywords it's a maximum of eight that's why you're having a lot of abbreviations in these keywords uh, it's just to constrain, con constrain it to it's just to constrain it to eight characters okay so the com that now for each of this world you have to define the completion data like the layers you are actually perforating and the status of that perforation if it is open or if it is closed that is if the well is shut or, or open or if that particular completion is open so it's possible for you to perforate and after some time you close that particular interval that perforation interval right that's what happens in real life sometimes you might close it be if um, it's too close to a water zone and you start producing water from it you might decide to shut or uh, to close that perforation and then prefer it from uh, uh, produce from higher perforation regions and all that so that is what this um, section of this column allows you to do then there are two values that have been defaulted here <coughs> uh, to default values in eclipse you just use the number of values you want to default and then a star right uh, I've forgotten what these two values should be, but I know that this one has been supplied is the well bore radius. I mean, uh, the drainage area. Yeah, a drainage area, and then one other value. Um, please, you can check your manual to check what this 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 values what this should be. But these ones are very important. Okay, also we've defaulted to values here. The two values we defaulted here are actually the x and y index of that I have defined them here so instead of defining it here again I'll just default them once Eclipse sees this to so have to go back to this and read the value so that's what that is so you do that for all the worlds you have in your model okay so we're done with that the next thing you have to do is to define the controls now we have well w con prod so W for well, C O N for control, and then P O R for producer. So this is where you define control for your producer wells for your producers. Like I said, I defined these ones as producers. They should be producers. So I'll have to write your controls here. Uh, the first two things you have here, these are comments. So don't look at this ones. They are comments. Now look at this line. This is what we're interested in. Now, what you ought to do is to define controls for each of the producer world like this. So, I ought to write producer 1, or prod 1, prod 2, prod 3, prod 4. Uh, since I'm having the same control for all of them, it will be for me to come by some writing all that. So, I used um, something like a wildcard or yeah, regex expression or whatever um, to now tell Eclipse any well that starts with. PROD whatever follows after doesn't matter but provided it starts with PROD that's what this PROD star that's what it means any well that starts with PROD open it as the status of the well open it so if it was shot here I'm asking the um, Excel um, Eclipse now to open it there are three values possible values here it's either it's open shot or auto so if you leave it at auto, you're asking the simulator to control the uh, the status of the well. So the simulator will either automatically open or shut the well, depending on the conditions it will see in this particular site. So we're coming to that. Now, what are you controlling? Remember, this is well controlled. What are you controlling? I'm controlling the oil rates. It is written O rat because um, it is constrained to four characters. So O for oil and rat for rates. So you can also have some like W rat, that's water rate. You can have G rat for gas rate. You can have L rat for liquid rate, right? Okay. So, but for now, I'm controlling the oil rate and I'm setting it to 5,000. So I'll be producing 5,000 barrels from each of these wells. So from the four wells, I'm expecting 20,000 barrels per day. Right? Now, there are other, if you're using W rat here, yeah, then you should omit this value and specify the second value. But since I'm using all rates, I've specified the first one. The other four values, I'm defaulting them. What are the four values? This is water rate, gas rate, liquid rate, and reservoir voidage rate. 
point oh three then she has um the liquid rate plus the gas rate right okay so i'm defaulting them so i don't need to specify them because i'm not controlling them i they can i can produce them at any quantity i want right that's what i'm telling eclipse the quantity the number of the quantity of gas you're producing or the quantity of um uh, what are you producing doesn't matter what i'm trying to control is provided you make you give me five thousand barrels of oil a day every other thing is um it's okay so that's what the first that means um now the the last value out there is the bottom oil pressure for the world so i'm trying to maintain it at 1000 1000 psi okay that's that for the welcome product please these sections are very important because these are things you might likely alter when you're doing your study you might likely alter these you might want to alter your rates so what if you decide to produce at a lower rate so you can alter this value what if you want to control something else not the oil rate you want to control maybe water rates so you want to limit the quantity of water you're producing and allow the oil to be produced at whatever rate now, like I said, whatever data you're using here should be representative of the field. If you do not have enough, um, let's say you're trying, you're producing and storing the fluid. If you do not have enough storage capacity, that means you might want to chuck back your well. And in that situation, you might want to control the oil rate to honor the constraints on the choke or the constraints on your separator or your storage or whatever. So this okay. like i said should be representative of your model okay the next thing is water injection control so we have w for water c o n for control and then i n g e for injection so this is where you control you define controls for injection wells now the label of the well first or the name of the well the fluid you are injecting you're injecting water so that's now the status of the well is it open or shut or auto you specify it here like i said the um quotes they are optional so you can do without the quotes now what are you controlling are you controlling the rate at which you're injecting or is there another parameter i'm controlling the rate at which i'm injecting and what is the maximum rate i'm injecting at 5000 barrels per day wow so 5000 barrels of fluid of water per day through this well into this model and then i'm saying that the bottom all pressure limit should be at 4000 it should not be greater than that it's greater than that i might likely fracture the well uh let's look at what is our rock uh, this thing this is the the pressure of the rock so it can withstand up to 3600 possibly a bit more but if it gets too excessive then you'll be fracturing your well creating other cracks so i'm setting it at 4000 okay so that's the um for your water injection so if you want to um uh you want to conduct sensitivity analysis you might want to vary this value so change it to maybe 3000 10000 or whatever just change it and see the effects it will have on your model okay so that's that <clears throat> now once you're done with that next thing which you'll want to do is um you want to do the t step the time step is just um at what um the time step at which you'll be generating the 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 results or at which you'll be writing to your summary file <coughs> so you need to tell eclipse um at what point you want to get your results so what i'm doing here is i'm telling eclipse i need results every 30 days every 30 days so if i writing t step 30 30 minutes every 30 days if i need the results every maybe every three months of course 30 days is one month that's um the benchmark so if i need every three months i should be writing 90 days here so 90 days and then the value that follows is the number of times so i need result 120 times every 30 days like 30 days for 120 times so we know that um 12 times every 30 days is one month that's 12 months so 120 times should be 10 years so i'm getting reports for 10 years every month every month that's what i'm writing here it's as simple as that okay so once you're done with that there are other keywords which
which you can use here a whole lot of keywords we have we combat well efficiency control and a whole lot of them yeah you can define if you're doing gas lifting this is where you define your controls you can set well targets and well you can um, well status to either open or shut and all that but like I said for this model these ones I'm using the suffice you can consult the manual or reference for um, other keywords which you can use it so once you're done with that the next thing is just to end your model and that's all you're done uh, I have omitted about two things first you know is this I actually want to show you why I had to include this and why I had to include this one too on the table diamonds keyword okay so but first of all let's run this and see why I had to include that so I'm gonna save this so I'm pressing that control s uh, create a folder please when you're saving this I've already created a folder in my desktop called WING so I'm gonna call this water injection and um, for Eclipse data file you have to save it with extension data that's the only way and then change the file type to all files miss very important change it to all files and then use the data to save it so I'm gonna save so with that I'm done now we can run our model now let's go to our simulation launcher again so I'm going to Eclipse I want to run it now so I want to run the 32-bit version so come to advanced run 32-bit version Go back here, add data sets, click on data sets and locate your model. This is it, this is the model. So that now this is my model, right? So once you're done with that, you can select the version or whatever and all that. But once you're done, click on run. Now this is our model. This is Eclipse trying to clean up and analyzing the file and of course it will run and then we'll see the results. So just wait, wait while it's um, computing. Uh, it says unable to open input data file. Error code is 29. Unable to open. Why is it unable to open? The measure may have been aborted. Uh, okay. Why is that? Uh, there is. Check this again. Did I ask it to run 32 bits? And then this one. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. Um, Okay, I don't know why that's happening, but um, maybe it's because of um, the way I saved the file. Let's let's try to save it again. Save us this time around. Let me remove the space here. And see, if that's the problem. That data <coughs> changes to all files, and then save. Okay, so I'll come here, and then um, I'll remove this data set, and then. I'll add a new one. Well, let me delete this. Okay, so now um, I've selected that. So let's run and see if we still have the same error. Okay, so now it's running. Okay, but then we have two errors. So we have two errors. And what are the errors? Let's look at what we have errors. It says at time error in wof table number one too much data it says the maximum of 20 rows was expected right that's what i was trying to tell you so the maximum of 20 rows was expected but we have more than that that's the same error here so now that's why i will need the table diamonds keyword to increase that limit <coughs> told you the limit by default is um 20 um, rows but we add more than that so now we'll have to increase that limit using the table diamonds oh sorry using the table diamonds keyword okay so having since we've done this i'll i have saved so 
let's go run it again okay so i'm gonna run it again and see what we have uh, okay okay this time around there are no errors so you see the calculation this in calculating gor and calculating all that okay so there are no errors so we're good to go that's that's great that's great there are no errors if you look at this there are no errors just messages now the next thing we we'll love to do is to um, use flow is to visualize our model right so i'm gonna run the 32-bit version uh, let's see if we can get oh okay so this is fluvis and i said it's a flu visualizer it's just to help you to see to look at your model and then um to look at changes over time with pvt and all that so i'm just gonna remove this remove models okay then i'm gonna open the model i'm looking for ah uh, sorry i didn't show you something I, I didn't show you this but if, you, if I had showed you you'll discover we only add about um, just um, one two three four files here it's after the, um, running the model that Eclipse generated these other files for us so if you look at it there are a whole lot of them you have the delete file the Eclipse run file which is used by Eclipse internally this is um, a text file text document this is outlook document um, this is the one of interest with us. This is the one we wrote, the data file we wrote. This is the um, the grid file which um, Fluvis requires. Fluvis requires this grid file. That is what it will use to show you the flow visualization. This is the RSM file we ask Eclipse to generate for us. That Excel file, that Excel keyword I told you. This keyword. This keyword. Without this keyword, this file will not be generated okay now this is the um, summary file sorry this is the summary file summary file that contains all the data we need okay um, I just that I need where are you I need to locate that file so what injection uh, just click OK yes this is our model wow but we're just having the grid blocks without the wells this is the reason why i have to use basic now eclipse just wrote eclipse wrote the uh profile and everything for us but did not include the wells why because we do not ask it to output the report the restart file we do not ask it to write to the restart file you use this to write um, to the restart file so that we can actually view it so we can view our wells and all that so this keyword is very important um, sometimes if you have this keyword and this well is not coming up or from the model itself is not coming up then you should be looking out for something like um, no ggf sometimes you love keywords like this so if you have this keyword, it will also tell Eclipse not to output graphical data. So all you have to do is just remove it. And you should be good. Once you remove it, you should be good. Okay, so let's go back and run the model again and see if we get what you're looking for. Uh, let's go again. So it's running. Okay, it's calculating now. okay so no errors no errors so we can go i'll come here i'll remove the model this one now um, i can now open it again water injection click ok and allow it to load <coughs> yeah and this is our well we now have our wells they look tiny so i'll come here and i'll increase the width let's use five oh set this up i want to see your connections the wall status and all that so i apply and close this so now you can see this one is blue and it's pointing in what meaning it's a water injection well 
cream is basically for um, red is for oil of course you can see the legend the legend is showing all saturation so the all saturation is 0 0.8 the that means a uh, regions where you have red have high oil saturation they are highly saturated with oil regions where you have blue are uh, the the oil saturation in that region is not very high and then regions where you have i think that's a yellow color orange or whatever uh, but it's in this region can see the oil saturation there is less than here so it means in the lower um, region of our well of our reservoir of our motor we do not have so much oil although the oil saturation is still large it's about 0 0.6 that's still large but we have more oil in the upper section uh, we can increase the width of these things to view these things more okay so that's, that's that and you can see the levels these are the positions um, to define the position, sorry, I didn't tell you. It sometimes it's good to take pen and paper, you just get pen and paper and draw this. And then you calculate the grid blocks. If you count, you'll discover this grid block is an, at 5 5. We are counting from here. It should be position 5 5. This one should be position 5 20. This one should be at position um, whatever. But if you count them, you should see it should reflect what we defined here so we say 5 5 producer 1 should be at 5 5 producer 2 should be at 25 producer 3 should be at 5 9 10 producer 4 should be at 20 9 10 and then the injector should be at 12 12 12 12 is basically the center so that's that so that's producer 1 producer 2 34 so the properly aligned okay now we're gonna view now notice you're viewing the all saturation and look at the saturation below look at the saturation at the top so let me place the model like this now i'm gonna run this model let's see what happens did you notice something did you notice the change in saturation okay let me go back again this is how it looked like initially then as you're running did you notice something did you notice the change in color wow okay as i show you that something is actually happening and then if you look at the bottom you see you will now we are having oil and water that's because this is the region where we perforated this is the region where we're injecting water so the water is now spreading out what pushing the oil towards the well now this is basically a five pattern five pattern um, well pattern so if you know of well patterns this, this is basically five five pattern where you have um, four producers around a single injector Okay, so I would love to show you the perforation regions um, so that we'll look at this thing well. So I'm changing the transparency. Okay, let me turn off the grid so that we can view this thing better. Wow, this is it. Now look at these green circles you find here. They are actually the regions we perforated. Notice we said that we need to perforate the second layer to the fourth layer for our producer one the same thing all, okay all the producers they are perforated at the same layer from the second to the, the fourth layer that's what this means perforate from second to fourth that's um about three layers two three four so we perforated three layers if you look at all our producers you discover three layers have been perforated from the second to the fourth yeah and then if you look at our injector our injector we perforated from the eleventh to the 15th now if you look at it very well you should have 11 to 15 anyway it's also possible to slice this model so that we can actually see what you're saying well i'm gonna slice i just need uh from the first layer to the fourth layer now, instead of the 15 layer so if i apply this now you see the now you see this one is outside now we can clearly see what's happening here if i turn on the grid now we can actually see this is this is it so i can even increase this even more so we get a clearer picture of what's happening yes and this is the second let's put it well now 
hey, stay where I want you to stay. Uh -huh. Now this is the first layer. This is layer one. This is layer two. This is layer three, and this is layer four. So you see, we're perforating layer two, three, and four. Okay. So that's that. Anyway, that's um all about um. That's all about the fluvis. So flow visualization. You can include this diagram in your uh, model. Okay, so I'm done with Flovis. Now let's go to um, Office and just get the results. So I'm going to run the 32-bit version. And then I'm running Office. We need to get the result and view graphical representation of our results. Okay, so we have this up. Click on results. Okay, we have this. So I'm gonna try go to file, open, summary, load all vectors. So now if you come here, you discover okay, it's the SM spec file that is a smart file. So I need this one, water injection. I click on that and it's loading the data. Now notice I told you all the Fs represent fields. So these are the data we actually access to output. If you compare discover that's everything we access to output in F F O P R is here F O P R is here right. and then all of that okay so let's look at our oil rates how that one is thing uh oil rate is at 2000 if you look at this is the green line and let's just let me increase the thickness of this line okay um and then marker style Okay, I can just allow it. Allow it. Let me apply this not only to this one. Okay. So notice from D from D zero, the production is maintained at two thousand. Uh, sorry, 20,000 barrels. That is, it was at 5,000 barrels for each well. So for four wells, we have 20,000 barrels, and it's pretty constant. Let's look at our pressure to see what's actually happening. So the pressure is coming down steadily, reducing from 3,720 psi to about, um, it's about 3,150, yeah, about 3,150. I don't like these, um, this good stuff so I'm gonna remove it okay so I think this is better for me now that's how to customize your plot you might not be very um, okay with this plot so that's the essence of the RSM file so you can take it to Eclipse I mean to Excel sorry and then you plot it and you customize your plot the way you want you can also get the tabular representation of this data by clicking on this so this gives you the time in days and the fuel pressure, right? Okay, so this is my oil production rate. I can also plot um, water production, gas production on the same graph. All I need to do is open one of the graphs, right? And then right click on the other one and click on add to current graph. Now this is creates another secondary axis and plots the data there. You can get my water to and then add to the same graph. Notice I'm not even producing water. This is the water line. Uh, let's turn this grid off so that we can view things well. Okay, so that's that. So I'm not producing water at all. It's a very good model. Then my gas production is steadily increasing and all that. Yeah. So that's 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 that. We can look at um cumulative production. Gas cumulative production. As cumulative production and then um, water cumulative production. Okay, so that's that. You're not producing any water. Is you producing? Uh, what was that? Okay, this is oil. First, um, this is water. 
then this other one is for gas. Okay. So that's that. Uh, let's also look at the bottom all pressures. So I'm gonna go for. So like I said, we did not specify the particular well we want to turn this on. So Eclipse is now generating for all the wells. But let's look at for the producer wells. The bottom all pressure out there doing. This one is producing steadily. Let's look at producer two. I'm gonna plot on the same graph. Uh, okay, it's the same thing. Follows the same pattern. Third one, the same pattern. So now this trade isn't more than the other. Okay, so that's that's that. Let's look at our field water injection rate. Wow. So okay, steadily increasing the water injection up to before it steadies at five thousand. Okay, but uh, let's look at something. Uh, at this point, what was happening to our pressure? Our pressure was steadily. Okay, it wasn't steady, it was decreasing rapidly until a certain point where the water injection stabilized at 1020 days. Let's look at what happened at 1020 days. 1020 days, okay, it became almost a straight line. Okay, anyway, that's that, and then um, so you can interpret, look at your data, and then give the appropriate interpretation to it. It's as simple as that. Okay, thank you very much. That's um, what I have come to the end of our tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask, and then we'll see how to answer those questions. Um, thank you very much for watching once again. Stay safe. See you some other time. Bye.